Hi guys, I am Isa, and today we're going to learn how to make a rack that reads your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Alright, so in my HTML document, I'm going to write div dot rect to give it the class of rects, and so hashtag rect to give it an idea of rects. I'm going to make a div with the class of rect. So, uh, yeah, it does nothing. Because we have to add styling to the rect, we're not going to be putting any text in the rect, so yeah. You'll say dot rect. Background black. Width 50px. Height 50px. Right, so, uh. I have to link the CSS file. I'm using link. I'm just gonna get out of this out. Right, so, I'm also gonna change the type to, to Rex Generator. I'm also gonna add a button with the ID of create rect. It's gonna say create rect, obviously. There's nothing now, but I gotta add some JavaScript. So I'm gonna link to my script.js file here. So script source script.js. So in my script.js file, I'm gonna say let rect is equal to document docket elements by ID rect. And um yeah. I'm also gonna say let's create rect. They go to document document elements by ID create rect. So create rect. Anyways I'm gonna say create rect dot add event listener click. So when create rect is quick, something's gonna happen, which is gonna be inside this function. Well which is gonna be inside this arrow function. It's gonna, just gonna do this. So yeah, create rect. I don't have to still click blah blah blah. Cause it's like console dot log rect created. So now, uh, if we let's go into the specs element, gonna go to console create rect. So say rect created. This is the number of rect created that shows, but it doesn't really actually create a rect. It's just a console log. I'm also gonna write rect created. I'm gonna write Rex weighted with Rex weighted with widths. Uh, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm gonna write with vector. So it's gonna be the width and height. Just gonna write this here. I'm gonna fill it in later. And uh, color. It's gonna fill it in later, as usual. Just gonna add semicolons because in JavaScript it's recommended to put semicolons at the end of the lines. Alright, so now it's time to actually create the racks. I'm gonna say let R is equal to document dot create element. So it's just gonna create the rack elements. It's gonna be div and R dot class name is equal to rect. So uh, that's what you do this right to a rack table. So uh rect dot append child. R. So now we can add some some rects. So I uh, will just remove this preset rect because now we can add our own rects. But uh, it's pretty boring. It's just the same black square every time. We need some variety. So yeah, let's uh, change the console dot log to after the rect has been created. And, uh, I'm gonna say let. Okay, uh, nah. I'm gonna say let R W direct width to mass dot random. I'm gonna say multiplied by two hundred. Let's go put some variables here. So that's max width and max height. So the max width is gonna be two hundred, and the max height is also gonna be two hundred. Alright, so uh, multiply it by max width because RW stands for rect width. Say RH is equal to mass dot random multiplied by max height. And uh, yeah. So uh, in here, I'm gonna say R dot style dot, okay, no, not style, style dot background. 
Wait, no, the thought is, yeah, that is. is equal to RW, but I have to add PX, so I'm gonna say RW plus PX. I'm gonna say R dot style dot height is equal to RH plus PX. I'm gonna be that number of pixels because why not? Alright, so um, basically, can I reload it? It's great, right? Just these random parameters. It could be anything. And so, okay, let's just change this to the format of string, or at least uh, that's probably what it is. I'm gonna chat these things. And I'm gonna write RW. RW, comma, RH. The color is gonna be RC, which stands for R color. Alright, so I'm gonna say let RC is equal to color dot value. But uh, there is no, there's not really any color variable. Let me just uh, write RC equals 5. That's good. That's just gonna be a placeholder name. Now it's could see that there are all these decimals here which we don't want so I'm gonna say mass dots round it's gonna round it up or down or whatever so mass dots round mass dots random was applied by max width or max height wait what no mass dot round all right so uh if we close up this bracket and now it's a uh, doesn't give us Decibels anymore because uh, it's gonna make the text prop too long, which uh, we don't really want here. So uh, that would quite wrecked. It looks a bit ugly, but we're gonna fix that after adding the color. We're gonna add a text box. Text box. I'm gonna add a text box. Uh, input type text ID equals color. We're gonna say let color equals document dot get elements by id color. All right, so now we have to write let rc equals color dot value. Gonna write r dot style dot background is equal to rc. Good, that should work properly. I'm just gonna write a uh, hashtag f f zero. Create it with that color. So, uh, th the first one digits is the red, if I want no red. Second digits is the green, which I want eight greens. So, it's just the blue. Also, this uses hexadecimal, so there's also A for 11, B for 12, C for 13, D. Wait, what? Uh, A for 10, B for 11, C for 12, D for 14, E for 15, and F for 16, or whatever. So yeah, you could just write many colors. And do it have to be three digits or six digits? Like two, three, four. It's either two, three, four or two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven. Yeah, they are different colors. Anyways, we have our red generator thingy ready. We can also make it to be a background. I mean, a random color. So, for the let let or C is not gonna equal color not value anymore. Let RC is equal to. I'm just gonna uh, uh, comment this. Is equal to. I'm just gonna put this here. Land mass dot random. Mass dot round mass dot random. Mass dot random. What's applied by? Uh, let's see. The highest is. Well, I mean, we can only use A, B, C, D, and F here, so the highest would be 9. And, uh, just gonna copy this. Control, control, C. Gonna put this hashtag here, because why not? Because a uh, hashtag indicates color. Reads rect, generates random colors every time. Which, uh, that's, uh, that's kinda cool. And anyways, uh, you can see that. Most of the time, the, the widths we get are too small. Alright, uh, so, uh, yeah, the rate of this is a bit too much, maybe. But, uh, yeah, good enough. 
Right, so uh, ba basically, that's how you've done all that. Just reduce max width, reduce max height to, to give you some more racks. As long as I've done all that, we're going to. As long as I've done all that, we're going to finally add some styling to everything. You'll see body, background, black. This black background looks better. It's gonna make it slightly blue-ish because, uh, because why not? Watch the color pair not working. That looks slightly blue, more like this. This VS Code C, but it's, uh, yeah, the background, uh, blah blah blah. So now these rectangles. I'm gonna add some more uh, between them. The margin is gonna be 5px and stuff. So yeah, the rectangles, and I'll have a bit of a bit of margin between them, which also make them look better. But before that, I just gotta add display flex, which uh, doesn't doesn't really do much. Actually, it does do much, but uh, yeah, this is what you really call much. Display flex align item center, which uh, doesn't really do too much. It justify. Haunted sensor. Alright, so now our rectangles they spawn the sensor of the screen. Uh cool I guess. Let's have a bit more style, like add sorry to the buttons. Let's say button border none border radius 100 V max. Looks like that, but it still looks pretty ugly. So I'm gonna add padding, 20 px, font size, 24 px. Oh, it's a bit too big, but then there's there's no such thing as too big. So I'm gonna say background, black. Just gonna edit it using VS Code's built-in color editor, so make it put more blue, as usual. But as a blue, the blue is a good color. Now we have this better looking button, but it's missing one thing, which is the color white. So now we have an actually good looking button. Oh yeah, let's also change the font of everything to mono space. Font family mono space. Okay, that's it. Work. Just gonna go to the button. Right, font family mono space. And uh, yeah, you know, right? It puts copy the stylings or that just copy this whole thing. But this was input. Now the input looks, looks like that as well. This is pretty ugly. So we're gonna add a margin of 10 px to give some space between them. Yeah. Yay. Um. Okay, so uh, basically, uh, yeah, that's a uh, kind of it. But after that, sliding to the rectangles, the rectangles still look pretty ugly. So yeah, I'm gonna say box shadow. 5px, wait no, negative 5px, negative 5px, 5px, the color is going to be black, it's going to create that, it's going to write inset, so be sure to be an inward shadow, and make the black a little bit more transparent, So put 5, looks much better, going to add some border radius, 5px, that looks much better, we can also add a bit of border as well. Now, like 3px solid black. Oh, okay, no, it looks better without the border. Now, I have this really cool rectangle generator, but uh, right now, so it's like the color slider. <laughs> it's, it's useless now. Um, but, uh, but yeah. Anyways. I could, I could look into the colors. Just like the, like the, this new one is seven seven four seven red seven green and four blue. Five eight one. But uh, I think we should return the color slider back. I will upset the color text box. Yeah. So yeah, let's just uncomment this or see the hold off value. FFF. White. FF five. Yellow. 
F55, red, 555, grey. So yeah, there are many other colours and blah blah blah. Like 4F. E. So yeah, we could just create many colours just this thing. So anyways, that's going to be the end of today's tutorial. If you enjoyed, you like and subscribe. So bye.